नमस्ते स्वागत है दर्शक बहन व्हाइट हिमाल टेलीविजन में मौसम स्वाधीन तबराल रा आज हमें विशेष कार्यक्रम अंतर्गत लिए राय को चाम न्यूयॉर्क रा न्यूजर्सी में कान्य पाली हरुमाचर जीत इमिग्रेशन लॉयर मिस्टर थॉमस मंगोवन न्यूयॉर्क न्यूजर्सी मात्रे न भाईरा अमेरिका में रहने हर एक नेपाली रा इमिग्रेंट लाई परिश्रम अध्ययन रा भाग्य देही को बाहेक और कुछ अंदर महत्वपूर्ण पूरा हो तेज देश को तेज ठाउं को लॉर और सिस्टम रे तेज तेही कारण लेकर द हमें वही चीज़ टेलीविज़न में सदैव इमिग्रेशन लॉ संबंधी कार्यक्रम हो रहे होंगे करते सों तो भी हर लाई सचेत कराऊँ ना इनफॉर्म कराऊँ ना लॉयर लॉ संबंधी पूरा हो रहे होंगे क रातेस संबंधी आज हम इस संग होने जा न्यूयॉर्क और न्यूजर्सी का संबंधा पॉपुलर रात न्यूयॉर्क और न्यूजर्सी में रहने नेपाली हर को इमिग्रेशन को समस्या हर समाधान करने लॉयर मिस्टर थॉमस मंगोवन वहाँ ले स्वागत करूं वेलकम मिस्टर मंगोवन थैंक यू वेरी मच सो हाउ आर यू टुडे आई एम well, I was born in New York State, and I grew up in Port Jervis, which is about two hours from here. Okay. And I spent a great deal of time in New York City with my parents when we were growing up, my brother, my sisters, and I. And when I was 18, I moved here, a girlfriend and I, and I've been in New York ever since. Ever since? Wow. So that, that, that must have been a long time. I'm in New York. Well, yeah. <laughs> if I say how long, it's going to reveal my age. But yeah, yes. I love New York. I consider myself a New Yorker. So you are a true, jaded New Yorker. I'm not jaded, but I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So have you always uh, been, you know, have you always tried being an attorney? Did you always wanted to be a lawyer? Well, um, I became a lawyer for a couple of reasons, but largely I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps. And my father was not an attorney, but my father worked for the state of New York. Okay. He worked for the New York State Department of Labor, and one of his jobs was to deal with employment and getting people work, um, dealing with people who couldn't find work. And my father really taught me that, you know, public service is an important part of life. I actually did undergraduate degrees in religious studies. When I was done with those, I um, was at Rockefeller University and did religious studies and critical theory. I am Buddhist. I studied as a teacher for about 15 years before he passed away. A huge part of his life and his way of teaching was that what you do for work really matters. So the idea to become a lawyer was came a little later for me. It came in my 30s. Oh, wow. So that's why I ended up being a lawyer. Okay, so being a Buddhist and uh, being taught by a Buddhist uh, saint, I, I must say, uh, did it change you to be a lawyer? Or um, I don't know if it changed me to be a lawyer. I know that you know one of the basic teachings is um, you know right mind, right thought, right practice, right livelihood. And for me, um, wanting to take care of myself, wanting to take care of my family, and wanting to make a contribution, law seemed like a simple answer to, you know, what is a life of public service? So it was the right fit for me because I'm incredibly political, and I tend to like to argue a little bit, so it just worked well for me. Sure, so a good arguer is always a good lawyer, I would say. Yeah, you would hope so, but yes, I think so. So how did you come across uh, Nepalese people? How did you start working for them and with them? Um, well, when I was contemplating going to law school, um, you know, I'm political. And I've been aware of a lot of political situations. Um, I was very much aware of the Tibet issue. A dear friend of mine is Robert Thurman, who's at Columbia University and the director of Tibet House. When I was in law school, I did a, um, a, a practicum, an internship, for a very big nonprofit in New York. And they largely assisted refugees, and I started dealing with a lot of Tibetans. And naturally, when you deal with Tibetans, you deal with Nepal, because a lot of Tibetans get out of Tibet and to go into Nepal. Um, I became familiar with what was happening in Nepal. And for four years of my life, I was an attorney for a very big nonprofit. And we covered a detention center in New Jersey. And this was in around 2004, when there was a lot of problems in Nepal. So one of the things that I did was I screened all new people who were detained, detained asylum seekers at the airport. I started to get more and more Nepalese clients. One of the people who worked for me is a Tibetan who grew up in Tibet but spent several years in Nepal before he came to the United States. And actually he encouraged me to try to start helping Nepalese people as well. So to me it's just it's a simple fit. When it's Tibet and Nepal, it's, you know, Comes together. It's, it's the same, cult, it's a crossover culture. It's uh, Tibetan and the police, they always come together. Buddhism and Hinduism, right. I would say, it would always come together. And for me, I, I, you know, I forget this sometimes, but it was born in Nepal. 
So Buddhism is such an essential part of my life. It seemed natural, almost an obligation, that you know you have to extend. You know, these are our forefathers. This is who gave us this. Yes. So you've started uh, your career with Tibetans, let's say. Right. The first thing, the first law I practiced actually was landlord-tenant law. When I was in law school, I um, interned for legal aid for a year, and what I did was I assisted people who were really being removed from their homes or had problems staying in their homes in Queens, in Jamaica, Queens. Um, another thing I did was I did labor law at Kennedy, Schwartz & Cure, which is a very big, um, very compassionate law firm that helps people who are in labor unions and people who have labor disputes. From there, um, when I did an internship in my last year in an immigration law clinic, is really where it clicked for me, where I thought, you know, this is New York. I come from, I'm of Irish descent. I'm third generation from Ireland. I mean, this is New York. We're all immigrants. It just really clicked for me that immigration law in a city like New York is, you know, smart, a good fit, and it really serves the public well. Sure. So it came to you as a career and as a driving force for, uh, you know, you wanted to do something for the people that taught you your religion right. and all. So that's how you came across law. Yeah, I would say it's more of a career for me. It's really the passion of my life. And also, I have to go back to being a New Yorker. We're all in this together. I mean, when you, when you grow up in New York and spend time in New York, you know, you have Cuban friends, Mexican friends, Filipino friends. So we're all, you know, you get the benefit of knowing everybody from all over. And it, it's really one big community. And I like being a part of that community. I travel a lot in my personal life. But I would say that from, you know, my interest in law, from my religious interests, from my socio-political interests, and being, you know, a New Yorker, it's, it's a perfect fit. You said you travel a lot. Have you been to Nepal? I have not yet. I spent a lot of time in South Asia. I spent a year between Burma and Cambodia. Wow. Uh, I've been through China, um, Laos, Thailand. I do plan on going to Nepal in the spring. In the spring? Yeah, I'm going to try to go to Tibet and Nepal in the spring. I'm sure, all the best for that. I, you'll love it. Sure, and it's a very beautiful country. So, how long have you been working in your form, like Mungovan and Mungovan? This August first will be four years for Mungovan and Associates when I went into private practice. I would say that um, I've had the good fortune of having a really great staff, of having you know supportive community members, and a lot of people give quite a bit. I mean, there's Professor Narula from Columbia University who has never failed to try to help when you ask. There's Robert Thurman from Tibet House. There's Robert Barnett from Tibet House. There's the Brennan Justice Center. So when I wanted to go into private practice, um, I was fortunate enough to have been trained by really good, really smart lawyers. I didn't know that much about business per se because I had never run a business. But I, there were people that I could go to for advice, and it worked. I mean, this is our fourth year, and I would say that our business has doubled probably each year. So I'm very fortunate and very grateful for that. So you started your business by your own, or...? Uh... I started my business with myself, with John Pigelso, a gentleman from Tibet, with one desk in a small office in downtown Manhattan. Oh, and two computers. And two computers. And that was it, yeah. And now, how many computers and how many employees? Well, we have more, I think we definitely have more computers. I have myself and two other attorneys. I use two attorneys of counsel, which are um, attorneys who do specific dates and cover certain interviews for me, and I have a staff of four people. So, so it, it's so in four years, well. yes, yeah. you have grown like from two people to four right. people and more and more. And you can represent more people. And I was talking to my staff the other day, you know, when we deal with people, we try to keep a real focus on when somebody comes to us, there's a family behind this person, there's a husband or a wife, there's children in Nepal, children in Tibet, children in Colombia, wherever you're coming from. You know, with the amount of people we deal with every day, you have to remember, that's probably quadruple because... Our representation starts with the person who comes to us, but we include all family representation, meaning that if a husband or wife comes to us and your husband and your children are in Nepal, we're going to represent you until your husband and your children come as well. So the amount of people we've been able to help each year has grown and grown and grown, and that's the great part. So very less law firms do that. I mean, when they represent someone, they just mm -hmm. represent the individual. But like you said, your law firm represents the whole family. Until and unless they bring their whole family here, mm -hmm. their problems not solved. You always keep helping them. Right. Well, I mean, again, I just have to go back to that's the way I was raised. I had three sisters and a brother. My mom and dad were really traditional, and family was the most important thing in your life. Everybody I work with has a wife and children. Um, you know, and how about you? 
No, I, I do not have a wife and children. I'm still working on the wife part, but children, no. Um, you know, it just, it, it seems like the right thing to do. We are a bit different in that the bottom line always counts, but, you know, at the heart of this, we really try to be compassionate. Sure. Uh, immigration lawyer, Mr. Thomas Mungovan,